Hi, welcome. And today we are reviewing um, Rinok Kunawara, who recently won the IWC Best International Cabernet. Uh, I'm Trent. And I'm Jason. And we're two guys on an unfiltered and unapologetically unprofessional wine journey. And our slogan at the Wind Up Podcast is... Drink, drink more, more, try more, more learn, learn more. more. Okay, so... Um, Segment is fun fact or thought of the week. So the thought of the week for me is around, um, we're on this wine journey. I thought, why don't we just go back to roots and understand what is the origins of wine? And do you know what that is? It's got to be grapes, but no, no, grapes, you tell me. How many years ago? When do you think we started to learn or when do you think people started to make wines? It's got to be related to Jesus. So I don't know when Jesus came. Uh, years ago, you tell me what's going Eight, on. What's 8, going on? Eight thousand BC. Eight thousand. Eight thousand BC. So that's in the Stone Age, um, in Georgia. So Georgia's kind of like I think old um, Russia, kind of like Western or Eastern Europe, and they they did it by putting grapes into pits in the ground. They put it there in winter, let it ferment and pick it up in spring. Okay, and then they create the wines. So 8,000 BC. So 2,000 years on, took them a while to kind of understand it. And they started to then use clay pots. Wow. And then they started to put then the grapes in the clay pots to go through the fermentation process and then create wines. So that was the first um, known kind of use of kind of barrels to kind of then create the wines. 2,000 BC. So, no, 6,000 BC. So wow, 2,000 years on, 6,000 BC. So there's other things to know about there is that um, within Georgia, there's um, 500 grape varieties. And to put that in perspective is that currently within the world, there's about 50 grape varieties that make up 70% of the world's vineyards. But they've got 500. They've wow. got 500. So okay. there's a lot of kind of old, kind of gnarly type of grape varieties that you never would have seen, heard, or tasted before. So I think maybe that's another kind of thing that we can feed into another future episode around Georgian wines. Yes. is. Is Russia, so it's part of Russia. No, Georgia's its own country now. Georgia's its own country, but I was in that vicinity. Yeah. I, I actually don't hear much about Georgian wines. Do, yeah. do you? Um, I hear it now and then, but it's really from the kind of European place. Wow. In Australia, I think it's really hard to kind of get a hold on kind of Georgian wines, but it seems like there's kind of a lot of kind of uh, smaller kind of different varietals that we never even think or heard about yeah. that we could maybe try. I don't know. Maybe we need a trip to Georgia. Sounds good to me. Let, let's let's make that happen. All right, that's something that I need to see. And I'm I'm thinking about the age, the age of these vines. There yeah. must be some amazing wines. Your okay. fun fact. My fun fact is is probably not linked to that, but um, it was something I saw in the news. Apple News. I, I typically I typically scroll through it, and it talked about the fact that wine can help your sexual desire. I agree with that. What? <laughs> and I'm looking is downwards because it, it's an odd is this thing. Is your desire outwards or a desire for people to kind of towards you? I I think it it just builds the magic is <laughs> is what happens. So some researchers and I'll, these must be some horny scientists or something yeah. like that. Yeah. They've been doing some research and they find that red wine increases uh, the oxygen level through your blood vessels and inner linings, and if that translates to your other organs. Uh, and your ears, your fingers, and and your other and other things, may, maybe a bit lower, even from the females. Your toes, right? Your toes. To, toes, toes, great, great, great for cyclists. Have a, have a <laughs> red wine with cyclists, but but even for even for females, uh, that was mentioned in this article, and I'm just quoting the article. Better lubrication as well, and and so. So using wine for lubrication is what you're saying? No, no, no. consume wine. Oh, consume wine improves sorry. lubrication. Okay, got it, got it. And so this article from the sixth of July <laughs> was saying some some clever scientists have worked out if you're bad in the sack, have a bit more red red wine and you can be okay. So just something to think about. If anyone's experiencing challenges, we're not talking about challenges with you and I. You're powerful. Mm. <laughs> Something to think about. It, it feels like we're just using wine to kind of mask some, uh, I don't know, it's not inabilities, but kind of like... Um, some weaknesses? Le, 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 weaknesses, yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. It feels like it's just a excuse. Can I say that? Or, but if it's a superpower that makes you great in the sack, why not? Why I, not so? I think after a few wines, we feel that we all have superpowers, be it in the sack, singing, 
sports, driving. Basketball. I should say driving. <laughs> <laughs> bad idea. <laughs> bad idea. <laughs> Anything else? So, so that's something I saw. It's, it's something I wanted to share. If you want to give that a try and put a comment below on, on <laughs> any experiences or benefits from having red wine, let us know. Cool. Uh, but that's the thoughts of the week. So what have you been drinking, Jace? Uh, the, the oh, th- no, I've been drinking, right? No. That's what I'm curious about. What have you been drinking? <laughs> I think I've been having a few too many drinks. That's what I've been drinking. <laughs> so what have we been drinking? Um, the other day, I had a 2018 Moretti Chianti. So people don't know about Chianti very much around the Sangiovese dra- grape. Um, I would say that the one I had, well, I got it for $20 at vintage sellers and generally they may be a lot more expensive. I thought it was a bargain. Um, I think it was a bargain for a reason. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that answers it. (laughs) For me, it was, you know, it's all the kind of elements are kind of cherry, a bit clay earthy as well that kind of came through. But for me, it felt a bit more light to medium, kind of lacking something Mm. like I think you kind of get what you pay for in this instance and for $20 for a Chianti that's also imported as well, which means that would have been about $10 or less um, in Italy. Um, it wasn't very good for me. So for me, it would have been like 6 out of 10. So it's not something I would probably revisit again. But what doesn't turn me away from trying other kind of Chiantis because I have, I know when I was in Chianti and having to sit in the table wine there, the Chianti Classicos or whatever like that, they were spectacular. Right. But this wasn't very representative in terms of that area. So for me, it was like, yeah, I tried that, but it wasn't something I'll go back to. But it's also representative of the of the business and their target market. It, it's all a business at the end of the day. Yeah. I've had a couple of Moretti wines, uh, and, and that's a target. It, it's uh, lower price value, give yeah. you an opportunity to try different different grapes. Yeah. Maybe not the same quality, but 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 that's it's good that you've tried it, and everyone now knows uh, an opinion on yeah. what that but again, is. Again, again, that's my opinion. Again, Correct. you can try it yourself. It could be something that you love and like. Um, but from terms of what my palate is at the moment, you know, it's not something that I kind of would go back to. Great. Okay, cool. Um, on to this week's episode. So this week's episode is in front of us here. The Ridoc Kunawara 2021, the pastoralist. You can see here, you can judge a wine by all the gold labels. You can see here there's many kind of gold labels here. And there's a recently stuck on, which means that it's very much relevant. Recently stuck on. Let, recently let, let stuck. Me it is recently stuck. Show everyone what these labels are. Okay. And then we flip it to the side. So the reason for these labels is that it was um, recently put in the um, International Wine Challenge held in London, April 2023. And it won two major awards. One being the best Cabernet in Australia. And secondly, the best Cabernet in the world. Two awards? Okay, so there's a world and... Okay, okay, I yeah. didn't realise that. Okay. Let's... Yeah, so one, um, two... One Australia, one the world. One Australia in the world. In terms of how they actually did it, um, 6,000 entrances entrance across 50 countries. That's a lot. Um, so the 6,000 entrants will go through a panel tasting uh, across at least eight judges, which is a blind tasting. So they don't know about um, the producer and they don't know about the price. So it's a pure blind tasting, purely on the taste, sight, smell of the wine. Okay, in terms of the different stages, the so first one is on your uh, regional aspect, which is around Australian Cabernet. So you have to, um, to get the gold medal, you have to get 95 points and above to get that gold medal, which this one did. And then going to the next stage, where then you're competing against the world's Cabernet. So this is, um, I don't know, um, USA, France, uh, etc. kind of win, win that uh, award. You know, in terms of um, prestige, you know, the IWC is one of the kind of um, better known international wine awards, so you can't take this lightly. And I think we're quite interested today to try and taste this um, award-winning wine and understand why the wine critics tasted it and gave it the gold trophy. Um, other things to note uh, specifically about the wine, because I tried to do some uh, the, the understanding of the Redoc background, is that the winemakers are Tim Heath and Matt Ryman. Um, they talk about... Uh, in terms of the 2021 vintage being the best one in 10 years. And they were quietly confident that this was going to be a spectacular vintage. So I think that, <laughs> you know, it kind of delivered in terms of what the expectations were. And the other thing is in, in terms of the name as well, Ridoc. Um, John Ridoc started the winemaking in Kunawara in 1890, and hence that kind of name as well. So I think that kind of embodies, you know, the roots, the wine, and hopefully now the taste as well. So maybe we should 
go into it. And you, did you say 1990? 1890. 1890. Yeah, that, that's a long time. And and I'm I'm so curious to try this IWC quite quite prestigious in terms of that and very proud of yeah. of the Aussies for getting this one through. The name itself pastoralist uh there's a reason that they've named it that way uh the pastoralist is is apparently a someone that looks after cattle or sheep uh, pastures pastures yeah and so that that's that's the title that they've given it so so let's see how this reflects yeah right. Sounds good. oh and the price so how much is this for a award-winning, award-winning best of world? wine 40 dollars what a bargain, right? Yeah, I think that's a pretty good bargain. And I think most of it's been snapped up already. Just to understand why it was so award-winning as well. So, you know, I've snapped up probably like two cases of this. And I think, well, as we try this one, I think it's good to drink now, but also to sell it. It's going to be even more amazing. Yeah, over time. Over time. Check out your local sellers to, to see if they, they've got any. Yeah. Great. All right. And, and as we do here... On the Wind Up podcast, we like to taste with our eyes, our nose, and our mouth. And as as Trent looks at it from a napkin perspective, let me let me hold it up and see if you can see uh, the wine there. Uh, how would you describe the wine? Yes, for me, it's definitely a lot more uh, darker in terms of its color. A bit more, they're kind of violets and the kind of dark red, dark violets kind of coming through. It's kind of for me. I'm going to use the word kind of brooding, kind of nature to it as well. Yep. They're kind of like crimsony violet. Kind of, um, it seems a bit darker than kind of other Dark. Cabernets that we had. Yep. Dark purple is is the absolute way. And, and if you if you look at the um, the legs that are on it, quite a quite a few amount of it indicating that it, it's high in alcohol. I think it's it is about alcohol level. I saw it somewhere, fifteen percent, from what I recall. Fifteen percent, well, yeah. which makes it quite high. So it's on the high side. And so on the nose. On the nose, I can smell the kind of um, black fruits um, coming through, uh, a hint of tobacco, a bit of graphite um, coming through. But I feel that it's it's still quite balanced and restrained in how it is. Nothing's kind of protruding. Mm. in terms of what it is it's not um you you can't smell the alcohol that's kind of like hitting you it's not the too kind of fruit forward the kind of like um smack you in the face yeah i agree it's interesting because as a cab sav typically the moment you smell it that uh, to me there's a strong capsicum smell that comes across it's not as strong with this one it kind of masks with with a few other smells and and I, and to me, there's there's a fair few of spices that I can smell, um, pepper, cloves, a bit of nutmeg, but but there's some spice that's coming through yeah, in I'll, the scent. I just had it on my palate as well. I think I definitely get a spice coming through. That kind of um, black pepper coming through. Um, again, those black fruits. In terms of, um, I think the the beauty of this wine that kind of comes back to me is around balance. But, you know, it's not the tannins, it's not the alcohol, it's not the fruits, it's not the acidity. It's all kind of comes together. Nothing's kind of jarring or sticking out. It all just kind of quite well balanced in terms of how it is. Even with 15% alcohol, you can't really taste the alcohol that's kind of coming through. No, there's no burning sensation in the throat. Wow. I just had a bite. Uh, I just had a, a drink there and, and the balance... Balance is the word, I, I think... Uh, the difference between the alcohol and the tannins and the flavor, everything kind of mixes well together. Mm. Uh, the, you know, it's it's a medium body, high, medium to high body kind of wine. The mouthfeel, it's got a great texture to it. It's a balance of fruit and spices yeah, uh, in terms of the flavor. It's not like a strong cherry hit or anything like that. And it's not, and the tannins are just kind of sucking itself out of life out of your tongue as well. Yes. It's kind of, again, balance it, integrate it into the wine. And um, I know I, I said to you earlier, it's, it's, it's kind of like dusty tannins. It's like you, know, you can like, feel some feel, kind of particles yeah. or some texture. Yeah, it has that kind of texture. It has that texture in a nice sense and not in a bad sense. Yes. But um, I feel I think also with age, this is going to again mellow. It's going to also change as well. It's going to be even more special. 
it's surprising for a it's a 2021 mm. very young it's so surprising to be this balanced mm. at, at this age I, I think that's what that's what's amazing about yeah, this i think the key word again is balance but also restraint as well like they haven't mm. gone they haven't gone all out to try and like maybe over extract the grapes and create the kind of big fruits or big alcohol or big anything like that it's kind of like having the restraint to try and um make sure there's kind of balance in that wine so i haven't i haven't tasted six thousand bottles of wine but just look at the wine bottle i actually think iwc and they're more experienced than us iwc have potentially got this right it is a delicious wine yeah. i'm curious to see what it'll be like in in future years and for 40 dollars, i think that is a bargain it's a bargain snap it up what would you give it in terms of out of 10 10 screws i want to see it over time but 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 to me i, I want the viewers to understand our appreciation versus typical cab sales versus this so i yeah. I'd, I'd i'd actually give this an eight out of ten corkscrews i think there's potential in the future based on age, that this will go even higher. Uh, what was your thoughts? Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. Eight out of 10 for me as well, because I can see um, it's beautiful now, but it's going to be even more beautiful as it ages as well, much like yourself. Um, you know, give it another five, 10 years, it's going to be even more beautiful as the wrinkles kind of set in, yeah. the gray settled in as well, and all kind of comes together and mellows down, and it's got even more more spectacular. The more Botox and the more Botox cream, is, exactly. the, the better it gets. I don't, I, know what, I don't know what you're using sorbolene cream for. Is it like the lubrication again that you use? Don't forget to try red wine for that for that desire if you're, if you're looking for it. But but that's great, and, and appreciate uh, it's an opportunity to try this. It's been snapped up. So many people will not be able to try this because it's it's already been sold out, mm. uh, and so that probably takes Unless us. Unless you the hit end. up Jason or myself in the DMs, right? Then you maybe send a DM if you, if you want a bottle. <laughs> we'll probably one be forty bucks, but we'll see how. We do. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, just to wind it up. So how would you wrap it up? So so for me, there's there's a lot of speculation about wine uh, medals and competitions and so forth. I think IWC is probably one to trust. And and this is a reflection of that. I think I haven't tasted all of their wines, but this is a great wine. So check out why IWC wines are, are on recommendation. Definitely check out the the Rida Kunawara Pastoralist 2021 yeah. Cab Sap. It's great. Sounds good. And I think for me, just to um, uh, wind it up as well, in terms of you know, I, have a, I guess a lot of pride in terms of that Australian wines winning best Cab Sav in uh, the world, and also in terms of the IWC challenge as well. Australia came second only to France. I think we'll get them beat the French eventually. But in terms of Australian wines as a whole, yeah. you know, we're second in the world in terms of quality as well, which is also a big statement to have. Yeah, Aussies. Go go the Aussies. Aussie, Aussie, and Aussie. we still love oi, the French oi, oi. people. Love the French people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so that takes us to the end of this episode. This is the wine up. Try the pastoralist. Uh, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And as we like to say here, Drink more, more, try try more, more, learn more. more. Thanks, guys. Thanks.